Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming back to Deb Chanel's What Is World, where we are discussing the Bible. We're dialoguing um, about the Bible, the books of the Bible. We're studying the Bible. We're asking the Lord for discernment of what we read from the Bible each night. Okay, if you're not doing that, please pray for discernment. You want to be always right with the Lord and what he's wanting to show us through his scriptures or the um the scriptures of the Bible of each book we're going through. We're going to be ending up uh, Job, um, the book of Job tonight, which is um, February, well, February, Lord have mercy, uh, September the 6th, 2018 at 2.22 a.m. in the morning, okay, which is Thursday morning in the wee hour. So when you're looking at this video, whether it's in the morning, afternoon, evening, or night, Blessings to you and your family for coming coming in and um, enjoying and joining me with the um, Bible studying that we're doing on the book of Job. Okay, but like I said, we have went very far. I wouldn't say we went very fast um, because we're trying to do each Bible scripture verse as we see fit in a sense. Sometimes I'm getting really geared into it and sometimes some things just have to marinate a little bit and we can't go into a lot of chapters. But we were just filled with the spirit last night that we felt we had to keep going because, you know, Job was wanting answers and, you know, he wasn't getting them at the time. So the Lord done stepped in and I wouldn't say he's chastising Job, but he's like telling him I'm here. But what are you bringing to the table? Uh, with all these questions you're asking me. But uh, nevertheless, the Lord does shine and show favor to uh, Job. Um, and that's a pretty amazing thing. Uh, but God is amazing and almighty, right? Okay. So, and it does teach us a lot from the beginning of Job towards the end of how we should approach the Lord and uh, be reproached from the Lord if he feels so necessary that he need to do that to us. Okay, uh, but let's go on in where the Lord is still speaking to Job, um, trying to get Job straight, hopefully trying to answer Job's questions, but yet letting him know who he is as well and who he will always be uh, for Job and other believers. Okay, the Lord speaks in this chapter 30. Um, where are we? Chapter 39, we're going to be going through up to, I think it's 42, and that will end the book of Job for us, and how the Lord feels, or he sends me, we will be starting another book in the Bible. I just don't know uh, what book that would be uh, after I give uh, the Bible study for tonight's lesson. Okay, but we're going to be talking about Job. We're going to be in chapter 39, and we're going to end it through 42. Okay, we're ending with chapter 42. Okay, Job 39 goes, Do you know when the mountain goats give birth? Do you watch when the doe bears are fine? Do you count the months till they bear? Do you know the time they give birth? They crouch down and bring forth their young. Their labor pains are ended. Their young thrive and grow strong in the wilds. They leave and do not return. Who let the wild donkey go free? Who untied his ropes? I gave him the wasteland as he, as his home. The salt flats as his habitat. He laughs at the commotion in the town. He does not hear a driver's shout. He ranges the hills for his pleasure and searches for any green thing while the wild ox consent to serve you. Will you stay by your manager, your manger at night? Can you hold him to the furry with your harness? Sean, I'm doing my Bible study. Sean, can you turn it down? Sean! Thank you. Sorry about that, guys. Um, will he stay by your manger at night? Can he? Can
Can you hold him to the furrow, furrow with a harness? Will he till the valleys behind you? Will you allow him for his great strength? Will you leave? Excuse me. Your heavy work to him. Can you trust him to bring in your grain and gather it to your threshing floor? The wings of the ostrich flap joyfully, but they cannot compare with the pinions and feathers of a stork. She lays her eggs on the ground and lets them warm in the sand, unmindful that a fool may crush them, that some wild animal may trample them. She treats her young harshly, as if they were not hers. She cares not that her labor was in vain, for God did not endow her with wisdom or give her a share of good sense. Yet when he, yet when she spreads her feathers to run, she laughs at horse and rider. Do you give the horse his strength or clothe his neck with a flowing mane? Do you make him leap like a locust, striking terror with his proud snorting? He he paws fiercely, rejoicing in his strength, and charges into the fray. He laughs at fear, afraid of nothing. He does not shy away from the sword. The quiver rattles. Thank you. I'm sorry. The quiver rattles against his side, along with the flashing spear and lance. In frenzy excitement, he eats up the ground. He cannot stand still when the trumpet sounds. At the blast of the trumpet, he snorts, ah. He catches the scent of battle from afar, the shout of commanders and the battle cry. Does the hawk take flight by your wisdom and spread its wings towards the south? Does the eagle soar at your command and build his nest on high? He dwells on a cliff and stays there at night. A rocky crag is his stronghold. From there, he seeks out his food, his eyes detected from afar. His young ones feast on blood, and where the slain are, there is he. The Lord said to Job, chapter 40, Will the one who contends with the Almighty correct him? Let him who accuses God answer him. Then Job answered the Lord, I am unworthy. How can I reply to you? I put my hand over my mouth. I spoke once, but I have no answer. Twice, but I will say no more. Then the Lord spoke to Job out of the storm. Brace yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. Will you discredit my justice? Would you condemn me to justify yourself? Do you have an arm like God's? And can your voice thunder like his? Then adorn yourself with glory and splendor and clothe yourself in honor and majesty. Unleash the fury of your wrath. Look at every proud man and bring him low. Look at every proud man and humble him. Crush the wicked where they stand. Bury them all in the dust together. Shroud your faces in the grave. Then I myself will admit to you that your own right hand can save you. Look at the behemoth which I made along with you, and which feeds on grass like an ox. What strength he has in his loins, what power in the muscle of his belly. His tail sways like a cedar. Swines of his thighs are close-knit. His bones are tubes of bronze. His limbs like rods of iron. The ranks He ranks first among the works of God, yet his maker can approach him with his sword. The hills bring him their produce, and the, and all the wild animals play nearby. Under the locust plants, he lives. And if anybody's wondering what the behemoth is, behemoth, uh, it's a Hebrew word that means beast, par excellence, referring to a large land animal uh, for possible identification, okay? He's one of God's creatures, not a mythical being, okay? So it could be like a dinosaur or something of that nature from what I have seen pictures of what it looks like, okay? But we're moving on. Uh, hidden among the reeds 
in the marsh. The lotuses conceal him in their shadow. The polars by the streams surround him. When the river rages, he is not alarmed. He is secure through the Jordan should surge against his mouth. Can anyone capture him by the eyes and, or trap him and pierce his nose? Chapter 41. Can you pull in the Leviathan with a fish hook or tie down his tongue with a rope? Can you put a cord through his nose or pierce his jaw with a hook? Will he keep begging you for mercy? Will he speak to you with gentle words? Will he make an arrangement with you for you to make him as your slave for life? Can you make a pet of him like a bird or put him on a leash for your girls? Will traitors barter for him? Will they divide him up among the merchants? Can you fill his hide with uh, harpoons or his head with fishing spears? And from the Old Testament, a Leviathan is the word used in both figurative and literal sense. Um, the Leviathan is seen as a large marine animal, uh, perhaps a crocodile. In description, he and uh, in any case, that he is even more terrifying than the um, behemoth. All right, and then we go on, still on uh, verse 41. I mean, not verse 41, but um, chapter 41, verse 8. If you lay a hand on him, he will remember the struggle and never do it again. Any hope of subduing him is false, the mere sight of him is overpowering. No one is fierce enough to rouse him. Who then is able to stand against me? Who else or who has a claim against me that I must pay? Everything on everything under heaven belongs to me. I will not fail to speak of his limbs, his strength, and his graceful form. Who can strip off his outer coat? Who would approach him with a bridle? A bridle, like something you put on a horse. Who dares open the doors of his mouth, ringed about with his fearsome teeth. His back has rows of shields tightly sealed together. Each is so close to the next that no air can pass between. They are joined fast to one another. They cling together and cannot be parted. He snorted. His snorting throws out flashes of light. His eyes are like the rays of dawn. Firebrands stream from his mouth. Sparks of fire shoot out. Smoke pours from his nostrils as from a boiling pot over a fire breeze. His breath sets coals ablaze and flames darts from his mouth. Strength resides in his neck. Dismay goes before him. The folds of his flesh are tightly joined. They are firm and immovable. His chest is hard as rock, hard as a lower millstone. When he rises up, the mighty are terrified. The Leviathan is mighty, but God is infinitely more powerful. Um, basically, everything the Lord creates, he can destroy. So don't get that twisted with anything that the Lord put into creation, that anything can overpower him. No, he's supreme. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, they retreat before his thrashing. The sword that reaches him has no effect, nor does the spear or the dart or the javelin. Iron he treats like straw and bronze like rotten wood. Arrows do not make him flee. Slings, stones are like chafe to him. A club seems to him but a piece of straw. He laughs at the rattling of the lance. He undersizes a jagged pot shears, 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 I'm pot shears, I'm sorry, leaving a trail in the mud like a threshing sledge. He makes the depths churn like a boiling cauldron and stirs up the sea like a pot of ornament or ointment. Behind him, he leaves a glistening wake. One would think the deep had white hair. Nothing on earth is his equal, a creature without fear. He looks down on all that are haughty. He is king over all that are proud. And we go into the last chapter, which is chapter 42. Job is replying to the Lord. I know that you can do all things. No plans of yours can be thwarted. 
You ask, who is this that obscures my counsel without knowledge? Truly, I spoke of things I did not understand, things too wonderful for me to know. You said, listen now, and I will speak. I will question you, and you shall answer me. My ears have heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. Okay. Then we go into an epilogue where it says, After the Lord had said these things to Job, he said to his friends, Eliphaz, the Canaanite, I am angry with you and your two friends because you have not spoken of me what is right as my servant Job has. So now take seven bulls, seven rams, and go to my servant Job and sacrifice a burnt offering for yourselves. My servant Job will pray for you and I will accept his prayer and you not deal with you and women and my Job. And my servant Job will pray for you, and I will accept his prayer and not deal with you according to your folly. Okay? You have not spoken of me what is right as my servant Job has. So, Eliphaz, the Canaanite, Bilad, Bilad, the Shehite, and so far, the Namanite did what the Lord told them, and the Lord accepted Job's prayer. As the Job had prayed for his friends, the Lord made him prosperous again and gave him twice as much as he had before. All his brothers and sisters and everyone who had known him before came and ate with him in his house. They comforted him and consoled him over all the trouble the Lord had brought upon him. And each one gave him a piece of silver and a gold ring. The Lord blessed the latter part of Job's life more than the first. He had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 donkeys. And he also had seven sons and three daughters. The first daughter he named Jemima, Jenema. The second, Kizia. Oh, I'm getting crazy with the names, y'all. Kizia. Kizia. And the third, I want to say Kareem Hop. Hapuchi. Okay. Now, nowhere in all the land were there found women as beautiful as Job's daughters, and their fathers granted them an inheritance along with their brothers. After this, Job lived a hundred and forty years. He saw his children and their children to the fourth generation, and so he died old and full of years. Alrighty. And it gives meaning to his daughters uh, that the Lord replaced from his other children that were lost. Uh, Jemia means dove. Kazia means cinnamon. And Kareem Hapachi, Upuchi, uh, means container of autonomy. A highly prized eyeshadow. Okay. And that is it good people. He restored everything back to Job uh, double than what Job has lo had lost initially. So guys, that was it. I hope you in thoroughly enjoyed it as much as I did. Uh, I'm telling you, Job, you can read it tens of thousands of times and you'll always get a different perspective of what the Lord is trying to tell you at the point of time that you're reading it. Uh, Trust me, I know. I know. I learn something every time I get into an old scripture that I read. Maybe a year or two ago, it tells me something different of the point of reference that I'm living in. And that was those times, those days. Okay, so be blessed. Be diligent with your prayer, uh, your offerings, your sacrifices, uh, your blessings. And do good by yourselves as well as others. And continue to read your Bibles every day. Uh, be vigilant in that. So you always be stayed up, prayed up. And you can help someone as well. By um, being a disciple for them. Helping them learn uh, the Bible as well. Okay. But um, 
each and every one of you be blessed, be prosperous, and I'll talk to you soon for another Bible chapter reading and dialoguing on Dale Chanel's 40s World. Thank you so much. Good night. Bye-bye.